Bolts Nation, welcome to another edition of the Bolts Block Party. I am your host, Greg Wolf, joined by the always stout and effervescent Braden Coburn. And we are here uh, with another amazing guest on the Block Party, uh, another first-timer to the Bolts Block Party, Tyler Mott, a.k.a. Motter. Is that the locker room nickname, Motter? Yeah. Okay, so Motter, you know, we throw it at everybody that comes on the show that's a new guest, that um, the Block Party a streak at this point is still going. And are you aware of the streak? I am not. Okay. So it's the new guy in the room. Right. So we got to let him know. Fill so, him in. so basically, um, I think it started with Glenny. Maybe I, I feel like it started with Glenny, but basically when Glenny started it, so, so to speak, he came on the show and then the very next game, he scores a goal. So then ever since Glenny, Waddy, Sherry. Sherry was points because he came back from the injury. He got two assists yeah. the game that he came back. But every single – Radish. Radish, yeah. ABB. Radish was the crazy one, comes on, and then all of a sudden, guy becomes a scoring machine. So um, we're, we're hoping that the streak continues for the next game that you play. I know, obviously, we're hitting the road and everything. We're not sure when this is going to drop. But when it does, we're going to hope that, fingers crossed, you keep the streak there alive. So um, I want to ask, because me and the Lightning Vision crew, Modder, um, knowing your age and when you grew up. Well, is it Modder the only nickname? Like, oh. is there an auxiliary nickname? Uh, auxiliary. Nice. Yeah. Good word. Because every hockey player's got maybe I've one or two. I've had a few others, yeah. Timo has been one. Timo. Like um, it. Um, juice or sauce because of Mott's. Okay, that's where I was going yeah, with yeah, that. Okay. That one's been kicked around. It got even to the extent of uh, Clamato uh, <laughs> in Canada <laughs> with Vancouver. Um People have ran with that one a little bit, but it, it normally modder is the one that rolls off the top. Okay, so if people in hockey circles are good for one thing. It's a good nickname. Like <laughs> it's like it's just not one nickname. No, no, there's multiple uh, offshoots of that nickname. So growing up, then you you were familiar with the Mott's applesauce commercial. Yes. So if we were to sample said commercial when the kid at the very end goes. I got the Mott's, and we played that after you scored goals. Would that be acceptable in your eyes? By all means, okay. yeah. I just want that's a win for the Lightning Vision crew because I was like, we have to sample. I got the Mott's. And then, you know, when Paul Porter goes, Lightning goes. And they says, Tyler Mott, we drop that, right? I got the Mott's. And then they drop the time because it's just one of those things that I want to create a tradition. And hopefully the tradition leads to you scoring more goals. Yeah. So I wanted to ask you in person if you obviously were aware of that. And if that followed you like through, like, you know, your your junior playing mm -hmm. days with that commercial being so popular. Do you remember that commercial? No, I don't. I, maybe okay. that one didn't air in Saskatchewan. I maybe it didn't, but I'll show you after the show. So anyways, we got into it, Tyler. And, you know, you being a newer member of the organization, um, we want to get our fans familiar with your journey and how you got to this point, you know, going all the way back to your days in St. Clair, Michigan, wanting to know if you're a big Red Wings, uh, Red Wings fan growing up. Obviously, uh, your older brother uh, playing hockey, being a big inspiration for you playing in Iowa. Um, but going back to way back to the Detroit Honey Baked under 16, wh why Honey Baked? Like, not the ham? Is it just Honey Baked? What, like, explain all of that, but we want to hear your journey of going from a very young age to, to getting into the into the majors. Yeah, so uh, grew up in St. Clair, Michigan, as you mentioned, small town um, on the river, pretty much across from Sarnia, Ontario, uh, about 15 minutes from the Blue Water Bridge, Port Huron, where they hold the big Silver Stick Tournament, which yep. is what most people know the area for. Yep. Uh, parents were teachers, um, just me and my brother growing up. My mom was a middle school math teacher. My dad was a PE and health teacher at the high school. Were they so, at the school together? Is that where they uh, met? No, they, well, they met at, they, they met at college, in college. Okay, gotcha. Both became teachers. Okay, yeah. cool. Um, and your dad and your mom, did either one of them play hockey or were you guys? No. So my time? dad played, uh, division two football okay. at, um, Adrian college in Michigan. My mom was uh, an athlete there, volleyball, basketball. Um, so they, they met us. Yeah. So a little bit, yeah. Um, too bad they weren't a little taller. That might have helped uh, me and my <laughs> brother out a little bit. But, um, yeah, so they really were the ones that allowed us to play. My brother uh, was the first one to step on the ice, really, in our family. Um, like any younger brother, you kind of want to follow in the footsteps. Mm -hmm. um, I ended up wanting to be a goalie like him, uh, believe it or not, and then probably made the right decisions being a skater after – 
fitting around 5'10". Uh, you don't see many of them uh, make it this far. But I feel like your parents would be like one, like we already have one goal. Like, yeah. Being a goalie yeah. is expensive. Yeah. You know, yeah. like the gear is expensive. Yeah. The thing about being a goalie, it seems like it's expensive. So I'm sure your dad and your mom were secretly were just like, yes. Like, yeah. just right. like Only one of them. One's pumps. enough for sure. Right. Yeah. Um, so we played locally f- till we were probably 13, 14 years old. I think my first year playing AAA was uh, the Quebec. Pee Wee tournament. Mm-hmm. Um, played with Little Caesars for that year. Uh, my brother had been playing for Honey Baked at that point. He made the jump from playing in Port Huron in, in local hockey. Um, he was actually goalie partners with Jack Campbell for a oh, while, wow. for a few years there. Um, yeah, I was lucky enough to be a part of a couple really good teams. We won a couple national championships with Honey Baked. Uh, I think it was at the time U14, U16. I you know everything's been it's changed. Yep, reorganized at that point. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, played with some some good players, had some really good coaches. Uh, Pat Peak was uh, one who played was in the NHL for a while. Yeah, had the unfortunate injury that uh, took his career, but he was a a really easy person to learn from. A great coach, uh, Mike Hamilton, uh, Jardine. We had some some names you guys may not know that I'm throwing out sure here right no, now, no, but giving sure. some people credit uh, that helped me get here for sure. Um, from there, was invited to. Uh, 40 man camp used to be called for the national program. USA uh, hockey. Yep, yep. USA hockey. I'm able to make that team there for two years. Do you have to try out for that or are they like seeking you out? Uh, both, I guess. Uh, most people get invited to a camp yep. from the summer and then the names get selected from there, whether they've been predetermined or not. Mm-hmm. Who, who knows? Um, I committed to play at the University of Michigan uh, just after my freshman year of high school so before i had really even been to the national program which looking back is crazy early to make a, a life-changing altering that, decision was yeah. that something you decided with your parents or is that yeah. yeah i was gonna say that's a to be at that age and to kind of accept that uh, yeah that's Always wanted to go to Michigan, or like we we mentioned too. Like, did you grow up a Red Wings fan? Were you all yeah. like? Because uh, I know Glenn Denning, yeah. he's he's yep. kind of followed a very kind of a little bit of a similar, similar yeah. uh, road yeah. map as you. Uh, yeah. So my dad was a big Michigan football fan. Um, gone to a couple games, but it wasn't. I wasn't a diehard Michigan yeah. guy, start to finish. Uh, took some other visits to schools, and it just felt right. Uh, the education portion was really important to maybe more my parents at the time than me, but looking back is a great school. Uh, so you get to kind of have some of the best of both worlds. It's what did you study? Uh, I was a sport management major. Okay, School of kinesiology, nice. but sport management. Okay. Uh, the thing I like about Michigan that would have attracted me as like a freshman is the helmets. They got the best yeah, helmets in college yeah, hockey. Right. I well, love they, those things. And they those stick with them too, awesome. right? Anything they can make the yeah. that they do. For, I mean, football has been that way forever. Yep. They carried it over to hockey. It's uh it's, a, it's an awesome universe. It's an awesome campus. Me and my wife still call Ann Arbor home, so we're around there yeah. anytime we can in the summer. So it's uh, it's been a place we've always gone back and, and really appreciated. So uh, go ahead. I wanted to ask a little bit about St. Clair. You said you mentioned it was close to the Canadian border. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So when you were growing up, you're playing hockey, you're into it. Was there a certain rivalry you felt towards the Canadians being that close to the border? Because I feel like there would be some, um, some you know, a little animosity yeah, back right, and forth. Right. Yeah, uh, for sure. Especially, I think, as you, you got older, um, you get to, when I was in Honey Baked playing AAA hockey or playing some of the bigger tournaments, I guess you could say, you'd get that rivalry. I mean, we were pretty much in Detroit, Chicago, or Toronto mm-hmm. area every weekend or every other weekend playing tournaments. I think... One of the more unique stories, I guess, is our Honey Bake team was the only U.S. team to play in the Silver Sticks tournament in Canada, and we ended up winning the tournament. Oh, that, that must have drove them crazy. That must have drove them crazy. And you can imagine the amount of five-on-threes we were trying to kill off in the semifinals <laughs> and finals, and um, uh, it's a fun, unique uh, thing. I mean, I played against guys back then that, you know, I've made it to the NHL. Some teams that have been historically good, uh, junior Canadians, the Marlies. I mean, yeah. teams that have historically had really good programs, and um, obviously Honey Bake, Little Caesars, Bell Tire, um, were all great programs yeah. growing up for me in Michigan as well. So when you came to the Lightning and you got Glenn Denning, he's also a Michigan guy. Are you instantly attracted to him? Like you guys got to talk uh, college shop? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So we obviously didn't weren't there together. Um, it always goes back. Were you there? And you know, so and so was there, and this right. and that. And you try and figure out exactly what years it Why was. The timelines up a bit, yeah. right? Yeah, and 
it's always fun. Um, you, you tell stories. You, you guys had lived at this house, this bar, you know, whatever, college stories, professors, even things like that. And it's just fun to have someone that's gone through it, yep. um, maybe a different time than you have, but uh, you, know, you still go back. The we, connection is You there. line it up for football Saturdays during the football season. Oh, yeah. uh, we watch the Lions game together. Sorry. Um, over break, yeah. Hard, but, Disappointing. But yeah, it's, it's fun to have uh, someone around that's, you know, been through some similar things as you. So the, you guys had a pretty magical season in 2016 when you were there because you went to the Division One hockey tournament. Uh, the You know, not quite the Frozen Four, but you scored an overtime game-winning goal, which got you guys over uh, Notre Dame to, to give Michigan the first NCAA tournament win since 2011. I think you guys lost to North Dakota that year, but... Do you remember that whole that oh, game? Yeah. You remember it? Take us back to that, like uh, that whole like, experience. Like it was yesterday, pretty much. Um, <laughs> I mean, I think that year, all in all, was I don't want to say the most fun I've had, but one of the times you look back and yep. you're kind of just in the flow state. Like every game, show up to the rig. Like you just, our group feel like we just had it. Yep. Um, played with some some really good players on that team. Great line mates, uh, JT Comfort, Kyle Connor. Um, with Zach Wierenski on that team, I think our power play clicked at 30 or 40 percent. Like it was, it was fun just mm -hmm. to be on the ice every single day and show up and um, that. But yeah, I was finally made it to the to the tournament um, for the first time in the three years I was there. Um, yeah, overtime Notre Dame. Yeah, um, I remember D man steps up. I chip a puck by through the middle. I don't know if it goes Comfort to, like it goes Kyle Connor picks it up, JT Comfort low, spins back at the goal line, beat the D-man that chip pinched on me up the ice, backside tap in. It wasn't like I did a whole lot other than chip a puck and, <laughs> and finish it. But uh, yeah, one of the more memorable celebrations, I obviously a big that, moment. Yeah. And then you go try and handle the emotions. You go back to back and play North Dakota, which I think was probably the most skilled fun game i played in my college career Interesting. i mean i uh playing with brock besser and stetcher and some of those guys yeah. later on um they're like yeah we <laughs> we were scared of you guys and i think we were scared of them a little bit just know they had a big line too with schmaltz um kajula and besser mm -hmm. um i think we were both like we were heavy hitters i think at that point and not that no, you can say it was the national championship two or three games before, but I think in our minds going into that game with them, I think they had a similar mindset too, is like this is this is the one and you take these guys down like you you feel good about where sure. you're at. Uh we, we came up short. Um I mean, but again, it's just looking at the time, disappointing. You know, it's it sucks. I mean, you, you battle that long to go that far and then um you know, just the emotional aspect of winning a game in overtime and then your right. season's over the next day after a, a fantastic hockey game. Um, but yeah, those are fun years, man. Yeah. I mean, being, uh, being in one of the best universities in the world, playing Division One sports, um, it's, yeah, it's fun. It's I fun mean, that was, the back. again, a That's catapult, cool. I guess, to really your professional career. You were a top 10 finalist for the Hobie Baker mm -hmm. Uh, that year ended up uh, as and, and he, he was able to something you've done a lot of is the outdoor games, right? Yeah. You guys, yeah. you guys played at Soldier Field. Is that the only one you guys played outside in, or did you guys play in the Big House too? Or we played two um, at Comerica. Mm. Comerica, okay, yeah. So Glenny would have played at the Big House, yep. yeah, uh, the That's Big right. Chill. Where they set the record yep. for like 180, yeah, yeah. yeah. 108,000. We were just talking yeah. about this weekend. It's <laughs> yeah. insane. And then we had two at Comerica. We have a yearly tournament called the GLI Great Lakes Invitational um, may have gone be gone now but uh, they ha hosted it at Comerica one year wow. and I, I came back fresh off a plane from getting cut from World Juniors right into that tournament uh, which was a really cool experience um, the first outdoor game real outdoor game sure um, on that level was cool especially at a you know place downtown Detroit not far from home place you've been to see a baseball game before is yeah, a cool opportunity they are Absolutely. exceptional. I mean, you. I mean, I played in two. They were they were cool. Uh, Fenway, we Fenway, and, uh, and Philly, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Fenway and Philly. Yeah, they were Citizens Bank Park, and, and Fenway was it was pretty was special. Remarkable. It's yeah. pretty uh, exceptional. So that's a pretty remarkable, you know, uh, path again to get you again ACHA first team All American that same year as the Hobie Baker uh, Award finalist. But 
Fast forwarding a little bit, um, you were drafted 121st uh, overall by the Blackhawks in the 2013 NHL entry draft, and you spent 33 games with them before being traded to Columbus. Obviously, you played for Vancouver, the Rangers, Ottawa, the Bolts, but Mm -hmm. go back to that that day being drafted um, and take us take us there, man, how that whole experience yeah. was, knowing how much effort and work you put in on the college level to now finally being able to get to that pro level. Yeah, and it's super, it's a cool opportunity, unique opportunity. I think looking back, you know, you have the goals and the dreams of playing in the NHL and then, you know, you make a national program, you're looking forward to going to the University of Michigan and then you hear that it's all kind of coming together at the same time and you're thinking maybe this is real like yeah. maybe you have an opportunity to to actually make this uh, a job i guess but a career um and we, yeah me and my parents drove to newark draft was in uh the devil's building uh, the prudential center uh it was the beautiful first newark oh beautiful <laughs> yeah i think our hotel is a uh, I can't remember. They're all packed, but we was the first day, first year that they tried to do it in one day. Mm. Okay, so the first round started at noon yeah. or something. Long day, one hundred twenty first. Yeah, long it wasn't. Day. Didn't take me too long to realize I wasn't going in the first round. So we probably showed up at two or three o'clock. Some of the rounds start rolling through. They finally, and you're probably sitting there for two or three hours. You hear some names, the guys you played with and against, and you know, you're happy. But it's one of those. Just a waiting game right. at that point. Um, yeah, one one twenty one rolls around. I think Chicago had two or three picks in in the fourth round and uh, traded up one time. And I thought it maybe that one's me. It wasn't. Um, and then finally, it, it comes. You you, know, you get to walk down the stairs. It's just a, it was just me and my parents. Yeah. Um, but just a good opportunity. I knew my dad was probably crying. That's my so mom amazing. was ecstatic and. You know, you take that walk down the stairs, the emotions are going through. You're hoping you don't fall down them. And <laughs> you get to the table, you get your jersey, you're shaking hands, not remembering names. You're just uh, excited for the opportunity, right? Like nothing, you know, nothing can ruin the moment, right? You're you're just happy that the hard work you've put in, the sacrifice that your family's made to help you get to that point, it all just kind of comes to fruition. And, uh, no, it was a great opportunity. Yeah. I mean, that day, uh, you know, again, you meet so many people, you do some interviews and it, like internally, you're just psyched for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you've made it to this point and you've had help along the With way. With the draft, I feel like sometimes people have an idea. Players have an idea, like what teams are interested. You know, they mm-hmm. kind of have like, hey, I, I interviewed with the, the, the Blackhawks. Mm-hmm. They really liked me. I, th- I have a feeling that the Blackhawks might take me. Did mm-hmm. you have that impression going into yeah, the draft? Yeah, a little bit, yeah. So I missed the NHL combine takes a certain number and they go off the, at least at the time, they went off the rankings of where you were based on whatever their scouts sure. and I missed by one spot. <laughs> so I had wow. the the freedom to go, uh, each team can have their own combine. Right. Yeah. So I was at Chicago's combine okay. prior to the draft. So you, know, you have some conversations there, you sure. know, you kind of take it for what it's worth at that point. You don't know any better. And then again, you see teams that, you know, maybe have had conversations with you before. I mean, being at the national program is a lot of exposure to that you know, for two years leading up to it, um, which is a unique opportunity being a part of that program. And so, yeah, I mean, maybe there's some people whispering in your ear here and there that, you know, leads you to believe. And, you know, I was very happy to be drafted in a place that I had already been, I guess, for for a weekend for the Combine. Um, knew some familiar faces. It was a great city, great opportunity. And uh didn't last as long as I would have liked it to, but sure. uh, still a cool, cool place and experience, you know, walking in making a team out of camp my first year, um, you know, playing, seeing guys in the room, Kane, Seabrook, Taves, you know, the big name guys, mm-hmm. Keith. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a bit surreal. I think that might've been the, you know, the second welcome to the league moment outside of being drafted, but then you get in a room and you see those guys on a day-to-day basis and you're, you're like, I'm, I'm here. Right? Yeah. Rick, you kind of. So hey, when I'm, you sign a Chicago, right, did you sign to an amateur tryout contract with yeah the so i explain how that works yeah uh well, hockey's always confusing yeah, isn't I, it? I don't understand uh, this, you get signed by chicago it's like well it gets you in early yeah, so, yeah. yeah. so i finished uh after we lost in north dakota yep um i ended up signing you know shortly after that a week or two okay uh signed an america or an ato amateur tryout I went and played in Rockford in the American League to finish out their season. Uh, so we ended up losing in the first round to Cleveland um, of the playoffs. So you get that experience on the ATO. And then even though I had already signed my entry-level contract, it 
just pushes it doesn't kick in until the next year okay so if i some guys you'll see out of college you're out where they'll sign their entry level they'll come and play a couple games and then they they burn the first year of their entry level contract right Right. So instead of doing that, mine pushed. So I still yep. had the three year entry level, uh, which just rolled over to the next year. And then, you know, kind of like you said, a little bit short tenured, you were part of a big blockbuster trade big one. with Columbus uh, involving Panarin, Panarin yeah. and, and a bunch of different pieces. And you were one of the pieces going back to Columbus. How did that feel? Like, what was the what was running to your mind? Because I know. Uh, as a guy that's been traded before, there's just a, an overwhelming amount of emotions that go through your head. Yeah. Uh, what were you feeling and what was your impression of the trade? Yeah, well, I've been traded a few times now. Um, being the first one coming off your rookie year, it's not something you really see coming or yeah. expect. Um, ironically, Chicago held the draft that summer. I was about to get on a plane to go out for an upper deck Chicago event at the draft. I get a call the day before I travel and uh, Bowman was on the phone. He's like, hey, um, you know, they break the news to you. This is what's happening. Well, and you're kind of like, it didn't really hit me at first. When I got off the phone, the first thing I could think of is, am I still supposed to get on this plane to fly to Chicago for this event with you guys in Upper Deck? And then I think after that, it was like, all right, what does this mean? Where am I going? You know, where am I going? What's the situation look like? You know, am I going to be able to make this team? Is there opportunity for me there? And so on. Um, you know, it, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a shock. I think as you, you get older and it's happened to me a couple of times since now, um, I think there's times in which you expect it, um, which in this league is probably the next month, right. <laughs> uh, maybe a little bit in the summer. Um, but yeah, you kind of, it's not easy. I right. mean, you, yeah. And you're going to Columbus to play for Torts too, right? Yeah. So that you know, he's a guy that has you know he's got winning pedigree, but he's also has a reputation as being a guy that's he's a hard he's a hard coach, yeah. right? You know, and he demands a lot of his players. I'm sure yeah. that was a little bit intimidating at first. Oh, absolutely. It was uh, first thing I heard of was a two mile run, uh, <laughs> so I spent a bunch of time on the track that summer. Um, yeah, hard training camp. But one thing I always respected about Torts, even in my short time, was there is he's honest. Like yeah. he'll tell you when he's wrong, even if he was yelling at you. Yep. You know, he expects you to, to do the same. Um, I remember uh, I was the last guy cut from camp that year coming out, and he, you know, breaks the news to you, and he's like, you have anything to say? I was like, um, honestly, I, I like to think, I believe in myself enough to think that I can still offer something to this team, yep. you know, whether it's now or, or down the line in the season. And, you know, GM and all that stuff. And I remember leaving the room, and he, he came, chased me down after that meeting, and he's like, good for you. Like, if you believe that, own that. You know, that'll help you as a player later on in your career. And when I got traded, I was in the American League. I got traded to Vancouver mm-hmm. that year at the deadline for, for Vanek. Um, and he texted me, said, hey, like, I didn't know you for very long, but I'd like to think I, you know, have some respect from the players. If you need anything, let me know. Yeah. Never, you know, never yep. reached back out to him, but just it's something you appreciate. Right, sure. You know, the guy gets a, a reputation for being hard on guys and even the media and some of the stuff he says, but I think he's one of those guys that you have to respect because he does respect players as people. And so you get to Vancouver, it's your first time playing in a Canadian market. Mm -hmm. Um, And I feel like your game in Vancouver, it's really where you establish yourself Mm -hmm. as a a full-time NHLer. Would you feel the same? Yeah, for sure. Uh, Going in there, getting traded at that deadline. um, They told me right away, they said, you your waiver exempt if you play more than 18 games, I think it was, and there was 22 left or something like that. And they're like, we'll, just, we'll tell you what 18 you're playing. Mm-hmm. And so I knew I was going back down to, to play in the playoffs in, in Utica that year, which is a hard thing to hear, right? You get there, you're like, like and it's yeah. a goal of everybody to get to, you know, you so you do have to hit on, on waivers. You want to put your roots in, right? Yeah, and so that year was, I mean, you finish it out like you could. It was a team that wasn't making the playoffs, you know, gave guys opportunities to play in different positions for me. Um, played similar to the role I, pl- I play now, but it's the first time I got, you know, maybe the leash, I guess you call it, to, to do it. Yep. Every Know you're in the lineup every single night and you're going to go out and play and you're going to get some minutes doing it. Uh, and it kind of rolls into to the next few years, I think. Um, you know, I, Greener was there for, for most of my tenure and then there's a couple of coaching changes that they've gone through, you know, more recently as well. Um, yeah, I think that, he gave me an opportunity to be what I can be. Yep. Uh, kill penalties, play against some top players in a shutdown role sometimes, but give good, hard, honest minutes. Yep. Um, 
So you, you mentioned your game a little bit, and you know when I look, we look at your stats from Michigan, and we've talked about the overtime goal <laughs> and the players you've played with. You know your game had definitely more. You, you were relied on more in an offensive role. Mm -hmm, right. Uh, as you got to the pros, your game, like a, many guys, has kind of shifted. And and who is instrumental in kind of like helping you kind of shift your game to the pro game and what you're going to do to make your stand here in the NHL? Yeah. Well, there. I think I. The defensive side, responsible side of my game was always there. Um, I think in college, playing with good players gave me an opportunity to score quite a few goals. Um, you know, I still to this day believe my offensive touch is there, but at times, you know, you're asked to do what you're asked to do, and you you. But by the you way, put you're, those you're one of first. my favorite skaters on the team. I, I love <laughs> watching this guy skate. I have clips of him. I love showing the kids that I coach, Modder. He's one of these guys that he's got just very, very good mechanics and fundamentals in your stride. Mm -hmm. We could we could videotape oh. your, your stride <laughs> no, and see what you compare. Know I don't want to embarrass myself. We could myself. show you, but Modder's got one of those strides that you just you can't teach. It's very natural. It's very fluid. Well, you were actually quoted as saying you like to play your role, play hard, kill pen kill penalties play an honest game, which I would think makes you like a really good utility yeah. player. And he's like, like, I listen, maybe it's true. Maybe it's not, but you like, I like blocking shots. And I'm like, that's the right attitude to have. <laughs> but yeah. is that for real? Like, Man. He likes blocking shots. I mean, but is that, I, that I like it until it breaks something pretty much. <laughs> it's kind of how it goes. Um, I like it yeah. until it breaks something. That I should mean, be on the wall yeah. here. You know, we got all these quotes. The quote right so, yeah. We got all these quotes in the practice facility here. I like it until it breaks yeah. something. Every once in a while, a bumper or a bruise keeps you going, sure. keeps you honest, I think. Um, but yeah, I th going back to how I yeah. found the role or the uh, style of play or whatever i mean i think you ask a lot of guys now that have been around that you find something you hold on to it yeah. to stay in this league to get to this league find your um, niche right yeah and um you know maybe out the gate it wasn't scoring goals for me so i had to find something um and i remember making the team in chicago out of camp my first year uh joel quinbilly said you're the first rookie i've trusted to be to kill penalties out the gate wow. basically roundabout way said don't screw it up no <laughs> um so that was one thing i i always enjoyed doing my you know growing up uh, at michigan it was something i you know part of my role um but i think that that point i really held on to it i'm like if if this is what's going to get me five six minutes night because i can kill penalties then that's what it is and that's where it starts and then you chip away what else can i do right um uh, on the ice and d's on draws right am i you know, killing the last minute of a game when you're up two goals with, you know, six on five, things like that. And all of a sudden you try and knock down the next domino. What else can I do? What else can mm -hmm. I do? What else can I do? Um, and obviously each organization, each coach, each thing has a little different view. So you, you know, just communicate on, on right. what that leads to and, and how you do it. But yeah, I, uh, I still do like blocking shots, believe it or not. Um, it's, I don't know, it's just part of the game. To sure. me, it's, to me, it's uh, hopefully takes pressure off your defenseman, your goalie, somebody, and, at the end of the day, it's if you're there, you block it. Yeah. So you obviously get the call. I mean, we could go through all the different, you know, uh, transitions from one team to the next. But obviously, you had some great success in uh, in Vancouver, and then got traded to the Rangers and Ottawa and all that. But that's not important at this point. It's it's the Bolts. And so when you got the call that you were going to be uh, coming to this team. Mm -hmm. um, what you know knowing how well this team has been over the last decade what did you feel your role was going to be and how you were going to contribute to this lightning roster i thought it would be similar to what i had done in the past obviously you know the the big guys that have been here for a long time that have won um you know, are still here and still still intact and you know that they're going to get re relied on to do their job um obviously the power play is pretty much been the same you know, add paul into the mix now but the, those four guys have been cemented there um doing a great job so you know like you kind of look through the roster and spots and what do they need and honestly coming in uh julian was really honest with me he goes he's I, I i need you to kill penalties and i need you to kind of solidify our our bottom six obviously there was the unique situation this summer with uh archibald mm -hmm. uh contract termination retiring yeah. um whatever happened there i i don't know honestly i got a call from my agent uh, that that the dawning days of the summer mm -hmm. and uh he said listen i got a situation here this is what i can do um and just felt like it was the right fit yeah. um obviously at the end it like any other situation it evolves over the year too right you come in and you're playing on a third or fourth line on the wing killing penalties with glennie and then you get asked to play center and you take it in stride and just try to do 
whatever it is. I mean, I that's kind of always been my mindset. I'd, if you asked me to play goalie, I'd play goalie. Right. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how well it, I don't well, know how well like it'd go, pucks, but I, I mean. but I would do it. Uh, right. And so yeah, I just again, you're trying to find things you can do that help your team win on a nightly basis, and it's not always flashy or sexy. It's not. You know, wish it was scoring goals more than it has been, but uh, just for the at the same time, it's, yeah. it's just kind of what it takes. Yeah. So do you and Glennie have the secret sauce to slow this power play down? Because you guys face them every day in practice. <laughs> you guys are always out question. there. Right. You know, is, is there is there something like that you guys will be like, you guys know a little secret on this power play? Because the rest of the league has not been able to figure it out. Outside of giving Cooch a right-handed stick, I don't know if there's a way to, <laughs> to slow it down. But, yeah. we, I mean, we see him a lot, obviously, in practice. I think it helps that we know some of the stuff they run consistently. And we, sure. you see it from the bench in a game, and you see how it looks on the ice trying to kill against it. Um, but, I mean, good players are going to make plays, especially when you're down a guy. But yeah. uh, it's fun. I mean, it's fun. I take a look at it as a challenge every yeah. time out there. I think, obviously, they're trying to work on stuff, so sometimes you're – Got to stay within. Isn't that your a good feeling, though? Isn't that a good feeling to stop that power play in practice? And then, yeah. you know, you see them, they're all frustrated. And right. Jeff Halpern's got them in a huddle, and you're just like, as a penalty killer, you're like, yeah, yeah, here we go. <laughs> yeah, it, it doesn't hurt the confidence at all. Um, same time, you don't want to take away their confidence. They're trying to, they're trying to build <laughs> a little a something too. Right? Right? But uh, yeah, you get a couple of clears in practice, and you're like, you look at Glennie, and you're like, oh, good for us yeah, right yeah, now. Man. But, yeah, maybe but we'll, wait for maybe the we'll next work our one. way on the power play, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then they throw one seam pass through both of you, and you're like, oh, they still got it. <laughs> oh man, listen, uh, Cobes, like seriously, like I, it flew by already. Like we're almost at that point already. So. Are we really? Yeah, we already are. So, oh man, we don't want to take too much of your time. <laughs> That's it's a good shoot, conversation, good. man. When you're just you lose track. I got of time, lots. So. I got. I, I got. A, I got lots of questions. I have here. so much, man. So, but listen, we we we're gotta, have to have on again. We, yeah. We'll have him on well, again. This streak thing's let's yeah, real. Streak, yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll be a regular. We will. Yeah. All right. So let's get into our factor fiction presented by our friends at Highlight IPA. Thank them for powering the Bolts Block Party. So, so these are pretty much. Uh, true or false statements. There may be a detail or two that may be off, but that's to see if you're paying attention to see what All we right. got here. Are we ready? I'm ready. I'm going to go first. Okay, here we go. go. While at Michigan in the 15-16 season, you reached 20 goals in 22 games as you and teammate Kyle Connor, who was just at the 2024 NHL All-Star Game, became the fastest Michigan players to reach 20 goals since Porter did it back in 07-08. I know how many I scored on the year. I couldn't tell you how many to start, but based on the pace, I'm going to guess true. That's a fact. Pretty remarkable. Sorry, too. fact. That's yeah. pretty good. A fact. Nice. Yes. Good job, man. And your buddy Kyle was awesome at the All Star game, by the way. It, it, incredible. He's, incredible uh, guy. Incredible hockey player. Yeah. But he's, we see, I, we're together in the summer. Yeah. With your a training lot of, group. I was looking at this, lot, this, this oh. training group these guys have. Like, yeah, who's in it? Bernay, Larkin, Hughes. Connor Sanderson, their goalie, Connor Hellebuck. Yeah. Like, I'm yeah. missing a bunch of guys, but yeah. it's, it's an uh, impressive training group in the there's summer. A, there's, a, there's a laundry list of, of high-talent NHL guys, and sometimes I feel like I'm killing a penalty when I'm out there, but <laughs> it's all right. It's fun. All, all right, right, here we here we go. Okay, your hometown of St. Clair, Michigan, the mayor's name is John Watt. False. False. That is absolutely right. Do you know what the name is? Bill Cedar. Bill Cedar Jr. He's got it right. Uh -huh. I was, I was, because my questions have been one? so easy if lately. My, I thought if, I could throw. If a my dad was here, he'd be able to call him for you. Okay, oh, wow. right on. That's Five pretty deep. People in, deep rooted uh, there. They're tight. All right, here we go. Tyler Mott, fact or fiction? You are a one-time silver medalist in the World Juniors. World, World Junior, Junior Championships. World, World Juniors. World Junior False. Championships. What are you? Two time world junior the world juniors. I have two time 2012 and 2018 U18 and 2013 U17 and 2012. Oh, okay. yeah. Sorry, I, I yeah, thought you phrased it. No, right. no, no. World juniors to me is the U20, under 20 U20, tournament. U20, okay. So an in international competition. Yes. Yeah. Two two times silver medalist, yeah. not one international rookie. International. You, you got the NHL down good. But I did. Uh, all right, you're <laughs> up, brother. All right. Um, so. Me and Greg, we both watched New in the Blue with we Gabby did. Shirley. Yes, we did. And you were on a pirate water taxi, and you guys both had some nice beers right in front of you. Yep. At the end of the episode, you guys cheered, and did you finish that beer? Fact or fiction? I did not. That is true. I think our friends at Highlight would be disappointed in that. So. It was a it was a little warm after it was the, warm the outdoor yeah, excursion. Yeah, I didn't think about that. Uh, you, right. you, you needed to be sipping it through the interview, maybe. Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah, I could have wet the whistle a little bit about that <laughs> for sure. All right, fact or fiction. Back in March of last year while you were with the Rangers, your current Lightning teammate, Austin Watson, who was on the Sens at the time, put a hit on you, which injured you for a bit. Fact or fiction? Fact. Waddy, come on. What did uh, you do? You, uh, you got kicked out, didn't get suspended for hit to the head. Mm. Concussion. For me. Yeah. Uh, I think Our I missed, so what missed was 10 that? games. He was my teammate about 30 days earlier. <laughs> what was that conversation like? Uh, the text was interesting. I don't think I was in a place at the time to see that text post game, but yeah. um, I don't know. I know how he plays. I, don't, I mean, Why I don't doing know. Body things, Why right? Doing was it a bad hit that you don't want in the game? Yeah, I think he'll say that. Was it him trying to do his job? Probably. Yeah, yeah. I mean, things happen. Yeah. That's a fact. Are you, you right. got another one? I got, I got one more. Are you a gamer? You gamer? Play uh, PlayStation, uh, NHL. Not as much for the last few years, but right. I have before. So your NHL 24 rating oh on NHL, 75. Fact or fiction? Mm, that's a great question. I, I don't know what the average rating is. Either. It's probably a lot closer to 50 or 60 than it is to 100, so I'll... F- fiction. No. Uh, fiction. It is fiction. Nice. You're 79. Oh, You're 79 good. rating on That's NHL 24. Good That's for pretty me. good. That's yeah. Good, for you, good man. for me. That's a solid rating. All right. And finally, factor fiction. Connor Bedard has gone on record to state you're his favorite player. Uh, depends what video you watch. <laughs> uh, the, the cut up one that the Vancouver fans put together says yes. The full video says no. So it's some semi true yeah. because something does exist half, out there. Half, half fact. True. Well, Modder's yeah. our favorite guest, so yeah. that, there we go. We can, you can Facts. live with that. You can guys live with that one. So, listen, Tyler, we thank you for uh, for taking the time out, and uh, we we love seeing uh, how your game has developed with this squad, and uh, I think the fans are gravitating towards your play, and we look forward to seeing uh, the playoff push here and what you guys are going to do down the stretch, and we definitely have to get him on again because we're going to keep an eye on the next game and see if this guy scores the goal to keep the streak going here on the Bulls Block Party, but uh, thank you for taking the time today, man. Anytime, guys. Appreciate it. We're going to have to get him on again, Bolts Nation. But uh, we thank you guys for checking in once again with another edition of the Bolts Block Party, powered by our friends at Highlight IPA. And we will catch you guys again soon.